In this video, I want to discuss some of the main offline educational approaches that you could and should be using in your practice. And, you know, these definitely relate to everything that you're doing on the internet. Uh, and I think they're really pretty much inseparable. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the main things that you can be doing um, in, you know, in the real world, so to speak, to, uh, to educate your clients effectively. So the first thing that I really recommend that you do is monthly talks. And especially if you're proactively trying to build your practice right now and get more people in the door, this is just a great way to go. Um, I, when I was building my practice, I used to host monthly in-house talks where you know my, my waiting room could hold 30 to 35 people. And that was a pretty full house, but um, it was doable. And I would rent chairs once a month and create you know, uh, just a nice environment for people, pick like a really juicy topic, something that I think had a lot of uh, kind of emotional meaning behind it. Um, and basically what I would do is just invite all of my current clients or patients to the talk and then I would encourage them to bring a friend or family member uh, and, and you know by doing that they would get in for free to the talk and I would just set it up as a free talk. So what I was doing with these was it was definitely trying to get new people in the door but also using these talks as, as opportunities to really educate my current clients in a lot more depth than I could seeing them within the practice. So you know by virtue of talking about deeper kind of spiritual or emotional issues uh, it would it would give me the opportunity to just educate them on how I can help them on deeper levels. So it's a really great thing to do for your practice, especially when you're in a you know active growth phase and you really want to ramp things up. Um, you know, I got to a point where I was just too busy to do this every month, and then I kind of dropped it down to every few months, uh, and then I pretty much stopped doing it altogether uh, just because I got too busy to do anything like this. But um, you know, as you're proactively building, it's a great thing to do for those two main reasons. It'll get you more people in the door pretty much for free, uh, and you'll have better patient-client retention uh, and higher, you know, higher compliance within your practice by doing these talks. And you know, you'll build trust and position yourself as an expert uh, a lot more effectively doing this for your current clients. Uh, you can also print off your free lead offer and use it for offline marketing and education. So you can go to your local print store like Kinko's and have your free lead offer, if it's a special report or ebook, print it off there and create some nice spiral bound copies of uh, your little booklet. And that's a great tool to use for all sorts of purposes. Like if you're out there networking with other business owners, you can give those away. You definitely want to leave them in your office, uh, in your waiting area for people to peruse. Uh, you know, incur you can give them away to your um, to your current clients and use those as referral generation tools. So encourage them to to give those to people that they know. So when you're trying to get more referrals to your practice, you want to think of ways that uh, just think of things that are out of the box. You know, besides just handing out a business card, giving people really awesome education based resources is going to greatly enhance the chance of them signing up for service and investing in what you're doing. You can also print off blog posts and convert those into simple newsletters and send them out as snail mail occasionally to reactivate old clients. So this is a nice way to repurpose content on your site. So your blog posts can be used not only for the internet but also for uh, for this exact purpose. So print them off, create a nice little newsletter out of your blog post. It's basically just a decent article, like three to 500 words even is fine. And then create an offer uh, at the end of that article and send it off uh, in a nicely formatted uh, piece of mail to old clients who haven't been in in three or four months or more. Uh, and do that once every quarter. And that's a great way to stay in touch with people who aren't that internet savvy and you know maybe a lot of some of your patients aren't currently using the internet and you you know they don't even bother with email. So it's a really smart idea to use snail mail in this way even though it is expensive and kind of time consuming. Once every quarter, you know, you or your receptionist or hire an assistant to just go through your old files and email, or I'm sorry, uh, just snail mail people that haven't been in using this newsletter approach and just repurposing content that you've already created just so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. We have also talked in, pre in a previous video about how to create condition specific articles for your website. Uh, and the reason that that is so effective is because it, it 
greatly enhances the possibility, the, the probability of somebody actually calling you from your site if they see that they, there's information on the site that is relevant to their needs. So what you can do is you definitely want to print those off, keep them in organized files, and then we've talked in a previous video as well about putting together a new client welcome packet. So if somebody comes in with you know, anxiety, for instance, you definitely want to print off your anxiety article and include that in your new patient welcome packet for that person so they can see that you have content that you've written that is specific to their needs. So they may have already seen that before they came in for, uh, for the first session, but you want to cover all your bases. And this will, once again, just, um, you know, solidify their commitment, enhance uh, trust and rapport, and just get them feeling like they're confident about the process if they see that you've written about their issue. Uh, you can also use this in a kind of a creative way for referral generation. So, you know, what you want to be sure you're doing is having conversations with your current clients on a regular basis, just kind of probing into their life, seeing, you know, what their relationships are about. Are they married? What's their work life like? And by doing that, just by kind of playing detective and gently investigating what their daily life looks like, it'll naturally come up that they'll start to talk about people that they know, and especially people that they know who are struggling with stress, with their health, with pain, whatever it is. So it, when those conversations come up, as they inevitably do, if, you're, if your client is, says something to the effect of, oh yeah, my husband has migraine headaches, can you help with that? Instead of just giving her a business card to give to your to her husband, you would whip out your little migraine article um, that's you know short and sweet, four to six hundred words somewhere in there, and uh, you know paper clip a business card to that and say, hey, yeah, you know, in fact, I've written this great article about how to treat migraines using this approach. Um, would you mind just passing this along to your husband? So that works way better than just using a business card or or just doing nothing. So. Think of, think of how you can use these educational resources to, to, you know, to really get creative about getting referrals in the door, networking with other business owners, and just positioning yourself as an expert in, in multiple ways. And if you really want to take this to another level, you can make auto re audio recordings into CDs and give these away to new clients to generate referrals. This is a really sweet idea, I think, because very few people do this, and it's really not that hard to do. Um, you see this resource here, kunaki.com. So um, the, this is basically like a, a print-on-demand CD company, and they will they will actually create the um, the uh, a nice cover for your your CD. Uh, they will ship them, drop ship them to people that. Uh, that you want, or you can just order like a big stack of them all at once just to keep in your office and just give them away as referral generators. Um, so you can you can do this for a variety of conditions that you see. Uh, you can do it as just kind of a general overall approach to you know showing people how you can help them. Um, you can have your you can read your free lead offer. You know you can just read that uh, into into a record a piece of a software, a recording software, and then use Kunaki to uh, create CDs out of that. And it's pretty cheap. I mean, I think you can get them around a dollar, dollar twenty nine a piece, somewhere in there. So they're really not that expensive, um, but they're much more effective than so many other things you can do to generate referrals. Uh, so you also can use a service that I did not write here called Audio Acrobat. Dot com and that's a pretty nifty uh, little service that will enable you to speak your uh, content directly into your telephone and then it captures it into a recording then you can take that recording and set it up in Kunaki to make CDs out of it so it's really pretty darn easy to uh, to create these little education based resources let alone selling these kinds of products within your practice is a great idea as well. So you can create information products that you actually sell uh, if you want to do that. If you're proactively just trying to get more people in the door, I would just use these as referral generators, as pretty much free giveaways. Uh, once you're getting pretty darn busy and your, your practice numbers are pretty stable and you really aren't ter terribly concerned about keeping that going, then you can shift gears and perhaps sell some of these uh, little information products because they're really easy to create, they're cheap to, to make, and you might be able to sell them for you know 10 to 15 times uh, what it costs you to make it. So just a thought there uh, to get out of the box 
and do something that very few others do to build their practice. So, okay, I think that's it. Um, short and sweet here, but this will give you a few new ideas to, uh, I think especially in kind of a creative way to uh, educate people that are within the practice and their friends and family in a way that very few other practice owners do. So hope it helps you out and uh, keep me posted. Thanks.